get out the vote. I have a really good friend who actually calls it goo. Get out our vote. So I really want to point out, I do not work for the government. At least not right now. Um, I do not, I am not responsible for getting out every voter. I am responsible for getting out our voters. And in fact, really don't care if their voters get out. And so, I am going to spend my time targeting our voters. So we talked yesterday about targeting. We talked about exactly who we want to get out to vote. But one of the things that we're doing is it's gotten down to GOTV time. We are all set. And so what we are doing at this point is trying to make certain that we have 52% here in our GOTV universe. And uh, I just want to point out, folks, we're on page like 39 in the book is where we'll be kind of referencing back and forth. OK, so we've started out. We started out with that huge all the voters. And so we started asking them the questions on, at the doors, on the phones, who they're supporting. And we got the ones, twos, threes, and fours. The ones, the supporters, came down here in our GOTV universe. The twos, threes, and fours ended up in our persuasion to re-ID. The fives, what did we do with them? We trashed them. They are dead to us. We're no longer talking to them. So we then talk to the twos, threes, and fours, re-ID them to the point where they either end up in the GOTV universe or in the trash. Or GOTV has begun and we have no more time. Now the ideal is that indeed when GOTV starts, we have ID'd by person 52%. The ideal is not always possible. And so what I want to talk for a minute about is how or what you would do if you got to GOTV time and did not have 52% in your universe. Ken Sue, if I could just jump in and probably just hammer home a point that Ken Sue, I'm sure, has made all weekend long. Uh, but at the very top of this slide, we say conversations win elections. Uh, and the tactics you have to use in order to really sort out your voters this way are ones we are engaging in a conversation. And that means either canvases or phone calls. Uh, yard signs will not sort out your voters. Uh, doing literature drops, uh, honking waves, things like that where you're not uh, gathering information from voters as you're, as you're getting your information out to them uh, are not going to allow you to sort out which people are with you, which people are undecided, which people are not going to vote for you at all. That's why you've always got to have direct voter contact as the cornerstone uh, of your field plan. Okay, so now that you've, you've done all the calls you can, you've done all the canvases, you've got all the people in this, in this pot, you know how many, how many supporters you have, but you're not quite to 52%. So there are some people that if you fail at your goal, you could put into your GOTV universe. We would prefer not to do this, but I'm going to explain how to do it just in case. So, if you could not, if you, uh, and this is, I don't like telling you what page it's on, because then you guys turn and you read that, and then you don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm not telling you. If you can find it yourself, go for it. But, so, you then, so there are some people you can put into your universe. For example, there's what we call base precincts. Areas where it is 60% Dem performing or better, where 60% or more of the people in this area are supportive of us. Okay, so think about that. That means that even if I have never talked to any of these folks, if I get three people out to vote, two of them are supporting me. That is normally considered an acceptable um, chance, an acceptable ratio, and therefore we might go ahead and say, these people, we're just going to go ahead and bring them out. So those base areas, we're just going to knock on their doors and bring them all out. It depends on your area, but in general, we never go below 60%. In a lot of areas, it's 65% and up, but definitely not below 60%. Um, and even if you're doing those, please think about people that you could still take out. So for example, Republican primary voters 
who live in a 60% or up down performing area would probably be good to take out. And you might be able to move your numbers up a little bit, right? Because you're just blind pulling. You're just, by, the, by their geography, you're assuming that they're more likely to support you than oppose you. You might also, so you can do it geographically, you might also <coughs> do it based on demographics. So some, of, some people, you may, through polling, or through the, or the canvassing and phone banking you've already done, you may extrapolate that these individuals are more likely to support you than oppose you. So for example, you may look around and say, you know what, I'm finding that senior citizen women um, are supporting my candidate 60% more, more than opposing. So 60% to 40%. I may again say, that is an acceptable chance. And I'll add those into my universe. Um, so you may look at, you know, if you've done polling, great. If you can't afford polling, if you've done enough IDs, you can tend to look at it and say, these are some things I can say about other voters. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions about it? Again, not our ideal, but is oftentimes necessary to do, more often than I like. Um, the other thing to look at or think about, and I will tell you that in 2004, I would say that one of the reasons, probably, one of the reasons we lost Ohio was because of this very problem. Oftentimes, there are people <coughs> in hostile areas that are supportive of us, that we may forget about. So for example, we, in the same way that we look at precincts and say 60% or up Dem performing, we're going to turn those people out, there are Democrats that live in areas that are 40% or lower Dem performing. So those Democrats can be the difference between winning and losing. And so we may want to look at and, and think about who are those people and make certain they're hearing from us. Because by not hearing from us, we are ceding them oftentimes to the Republicans. Some of them will still, you know, they live in very hostile areas, they're still going to come to us. Um, but some of them won't. And so we need to remind them that we love them and that we would like to see them at the polls. Okay. So those are three places that you really might want to look for additional voters. But uh, the big thing is, you know, if you're moving to that phase of the campaign where you're going to stop persuading, you're going to stop uh, trying to identify new voters and turn all of your attention to the people that are likely to vote for you, either because they've told us they're going to vote for us, or like Kendra Sue said, they live in an area or fit, uh, you know, fit a description of our likely voter. Those are the only people we're going to talk to in the final phases of the campaign. So we've got to make sure that there's enough people in this universe for us to win the election. Um, so that's why it's important. I mean, that's why it's important to do this stuff and do it aggressively all the way through the campaign because you're always building up this GOTV universe. But if you're not there, you've got to find some other ways to at least get enough votes in that universe that you can get these people out to vote and win. Makes sense. Are we all in food coma or <laughs> tired? Or, okay. Ready to stretch again? I think maybe one of the issues is what happens if it's not attainable? You don't just hang up the campaign right then and there. You follow through. Right. No matter what, you yeah. need to follow through. Here's the thing if you really get to, you know, two weeks out and you say, I haven't ID'd enough people, I'm not even yeah. close, I can't find them through these other methods. My recommendation is that you need to have a, a, a pretty tough conversation with yourself and say, you know what, maybe this is a three-year program, not a one-year program. Maybe we are looking at how are we going to win in two years, not this year. This is a building operation. You know, and that's not an easy conversation to have, and particularly not a week out. Um, but you may have to have that conversation. But I will tell you, I've had, I've actually worked on the campaign of that person who lost the first time and has decided to try again. And if you screw it up the first time so badly, you can't really win it the second time.